are here in front of Mark's beloved barber shop where many memories were made. Mark will be very missed in the Bainbridge community. Here are a few Mark stories. Mark and I go way back, uh, lived, lived uh, beside Mark for more than 20 years. Uh, extremely special person to me. Uh, actually gave me my name Pete as a nickname uh, 35, 40 years ago. I was in first grade when we moved beside Mark and uh, all the guys in the neighborhood and really took me under his wing and uh, become a real special person. Uh, you know, 40 years later when I officially uh, changed my name to Pete, that's the first person that I called and told. And uh, so that's real special for the entire community and that uh, meant a lot to a lot of people that uh, got on a school bus every morning. And uh, just uh, as a coach, you could always, uh, always expect uh, a hard time from Mark, but then a hug. Uh, wins and losses didn't really matter to him and uh, just, a, just a great guy to be around. Mark was such a great guy. You could walk by his house or drive by and if his door was open to anyone all the time, you could just walk in and op with, he'd welcome you with open arms. And I remember when I was littler, he had this truck. It's this beat up old red truck and he put stickers on the back of like the bed and he let me like design my own little sticker and it was, meant a lot to me. Like a lot of people, uh, I was greeted at the barber shop by Mark. Uh, every time I would come in, he would always greet me with a, Hi Sarge, how you doing? Um, really gonna miss that. Uh, rest well, brother. Uh, the community loves you well, and we'll remember you. So this one time, whenever I was working in Kohl's, Mark Anderson came in, and he knows the managers fairly well, and he was talking to them, and I was like, hey Mark, and he said, what's up? I was like, could you, could I sign you up for a Coles card? And Mark, that very second, called Coles, canceled his card, and got a new one through me so I could get a raise on my check. He was a really great guy. Me and Mark was close, and me and Mark, he has helped me through drug issues, helped me get off pills, marijuana, Mark has influenced me a whole lot. He influenced me to quit drugs and do a sport. I picked up football. And he got me away from bad influences, introduced me to good influences. Me and Mark was close in school and out of school. I helped him with his yard, helped him around his house, but very rare did I. Some of the things I remember most about Mark Anderson are his sense of humor and just the funny things he did. A lot of barbershop antics and he and I hung around together uh, outside of school when I was in college and did a lot of funny things. But I remember one time a man came in to get a haircut and Mark started cutting his hair and the guy said mid haircut, Mark I forgot my wallet I'll have to come back and pay you. Mark said that's no problem. A little bit later here the guy come back upset because Mark had left a big old patch of hair in the back of his head. And the guy was upset. Mark said, when you pay me, I'll finish the haircut. Uh, the thing I'll probably remember most about Mark, though, is he loved his kids. And, and the way he handled them on the school bus uh, was, was unlike anyone else. Uh, they loved him and he loved them. And just the relationship and, and the deep trust and, and care that they had for Mark Anderson uh, was phenomenal. And, and I'll miss that and having him around and just the, the sense of humor that Mark always brought to every situation. two Mark stories. One, our bus, on our bus, he always made us do evacuation drills, like twice a week, and everybody's like, Mark, why do we keep having to do this all the time? And one day, it just happened to come in handy when we got in a bus accident, and we evacuated perfectly. And if it wasn't for him teaching us, we would have never known what to do. And another one is, back when I lived in Bainbridge, <laughs> my dogs loved him, and they always, always dug or chewed our fence out and would just go sit in his barber shop for hours when we were hunting for them, calling their names. They were just sitting in his barber shop. <laughs> I just can't, I'm just lost for words for Mark being gone. Hey, I have a little, little tidbit about Mark Anderson. And um, when I first came to Bainbridge, Mark Anderson um, said, well, hey, 
I hear you're from Cleveland, and I am from a uh, suburb from the east side of Cleveland. And he said, um, nothing good comes from Cleveland, but I gotta ask you, um, are you a Cleveland Browns fan? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, then you're all good. You can stay in Bainbridge. So that's just my little story about Mark Anderson. I remember Mark as the bus driver. He, I had him for about four and a half years. That was, it was really good years. He'd always make me laugh. Um, I used to have this Ohio State teddy bear in my book bag. And every time he'd seen it, he'd always ask me if he'd have it. And I always picked on him and said, no, you can't have it, that's mine. He goes, but come on, he goes, you know Ohio State's my favorite team. I'm like, no, I'm like, that's also mine. He goes, you can't have it. Every time I'd go to the barber shop with my uncle and my grandpa, he'd seen me, the first thing he'd do is give me a hug. He would have a big smile on his face, and he'd just be so happy all the time. I was trying to remember the other day, the very first time that I met Mark Anderson. And I couldn't, and the reason I couldn't is because the first time you meet Mark Anderson, it's like you've known him your entire life. Mark and Dave are just that way. They make you feel right at home and like they've known you forever. I do remember um, every time I would go into the shop with the boys, which they had to go to the barber shop in Bainbridge, even though we lived most of our lives in Chillicothe, um, they, that's, if you went to Paint Valley, you had to get your hair cut by Mark and Dave. I mean, that's just, well, that was standard. You weren't cool unless you got your hair cut there. So we made that trip, and I would always enjoy going in there and, and sitting in the barber shop while the boys were getting their hair cut. Um, it was comical. It was so much fun, and I learned a lot about the community, and, and I got to catch up on the school and what their opinions and thoughts were and, and all the, the gossip. And, and I would always go home, and I would say, um, it's like going into a beauty shop. Uh, you wouldn't think that in a barber shop, men would sit around and they would gossip and tell stories. And it, it's just like the women, but only the stories are much different, much more colorful. Um, I always had a good time in there. And um, Mark is just a dynamic person. He, he was just one of those people that you just love being around. He had great hugs and he told big stories and he just made you laugh and he made you feel good and the whole time that you were in the shop or just in his presence you felt happy and I know that a lot of the students that were writing things about him and, and the many things that I read on Facebook um, they were all talking about stories of Mark and the way that he made them feel and I admire the part where we had students that Mark never had any of biological children of his own, but yet he took kids in and and there were kids that needed to be taken in and loved and made to feel like they were special. And um, he was just so funny. My kids loved him. They thought he was the bomb. He, uh, when we were living in the apartments in Bainbridge by the pharmacy, and that was for a very short period of time, Clay went down to get a haircut and uh, he came back and, and on one side of his head, Mark had given him a high and tight, and on the other side, he, he had just left it long. And he thought that was real funny. He sent the kids back home, and um, Clay, came, Clay came walking in, and I looked at his hair, I'm like, oh, what is this? And I, I grabbed his hand, and we went down to the barber shop, and I knew that Mark would be standing there just waiting to laugh at me. And he was. He, um... He said, I knew you'd be back in, and uh, he had that big belly laugh, and he just thought that was the funniest thing ever. Um, I remember during the bus accident, of all the bus drivers that we had that could have been involved in that accident, I was very comfortable knowing that those kids were in Mark's hands. He was a very confident driver, but um, it goes beyond that. I think that he had them emotionally and um, he cared about their well-being and that they felt safe and he was that big teddy bear that just kind of wrapped around them in a time where they were probably <laughs> scared to death and um, I can remember uh, walking out to the bus circle as they came in in the morning um, after that happened I wanted to meet the kids as they were coming off the bus in case any of them felt traumatized and they, they, they needed to talk and or um, were afraid 
and I remember going up and talking to Mark and thanking him for keeping our kids safe. And once again, he gave me that big hug. And um, he was just so humble about it. Like, you know, that's just what you do. You know, he, he didn't make a big issue of it. And he just, um, that's just what was expected. And, and that's what Mark did. He made everybody around him feel loved and secure and happy. And I can't imagine this community um, without Mark in it. He, Mark, um, is synonymous with Bainbridge. And he is the icon. And I feel bad for the kids coming up that aren't going to get to experience that. And to uh, Dave and Lucy and the siblings, um, I'm very sorry for your loss. And I appreciate you making me feel very special. Um, being an outsider coming to Bainbridge and taking me and my boys in and making us feel loved and happy and a part of your community. And thank you for sharing your son with us.